Hey there. Recently, I was challenged by Tara Giblin Art here on YouTube to do a five minute watercolor landscape. Five minutes. I thought, oh, I don't know. Can I, will I be able to pull that off? Um, so in today's video, we are going to look at this five minute landscape watercolor uh, challenge and see, do I pull it off? And then she also kind of encouraged me to pass this little challenge along. So stay tuned to find out. Uh, I'm going to share with you who I think would be great at this challenge, who I would like to see do this challenge. But most importantly, who am I going to pass this challenge on to? Um, because I am going to pass it along. So if you follow the channel and you follow me, then you might have a kind of an idea of where this is going to go to, but stay tuned. It might surprise you. Stay tuned and we will get there. For now, let's jump right into, I'm going to put five minutes on a clock up around this area of your screen and we're going to dive right in and see what happens. And then I'm going to come back and share my thoughts with you on the entire experience. Here we go. The colors that I'm using today are from the Daniel Smith Colors of Inspiration palette and are Shadow Violet, uh, Violet. Uh, that is not from the collection, but is Lunar Black. And the first one was Moon Glow. I may also use some Serpentine Genuine, which is the green, as well as the Wisteria or Rose of Ultramarine. Inject. Okay. Okay. I'm going to need to reset my timer. Five minutes back on the clock. I feel like reset the clock. Minute set. Got five answers on the board. Okay. It's nerve wracking. All right, I'm going to need to turn this a little bit so I can kind of try to focus. This time, last time I had no dryer. This time, I might use my heat tool. I might just. Here we go. I don't know if I wouldn't have made the mistake with the um, 
tree right here might have had it. Might have had it. Ah. <sighs> oh, so crazy, so crazy. And they're like. <sighs> Definitely not easy. <clears throat> Definitely not easy. <sighs> so crazy. <sighs> Much closer. Much closer. Let's try one more time. Okay. We got another five minutes on the clock. There is my mat. All right. Fingers crossed. I need to keep this this side in here. So I don't know where it is when it's time to grab it. It's like having everything ready. Like you gotta have everything ready. Now, if I wasn't following this reference and I was just doing a landscape, I have the utmost confidence that I could absolutely achieve a landscape in five minutes. <clears throat> However, however, because we are trying to be quite um, specific, 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 just didn't sound right, specific, and paint this particular landscape, my brain goes, you have to get it right. And my hands go, I don't know what I'm doing. And the clock is like, tick, 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 tick. no pressure. <sighs> okay. You know what? We're just going to do this and see what happens. I have one that I'm looking at and going, it's not that bad. Kinda. It's just that little thing that you really messed up that screwed everything up. <sighs> That's all right. We got this. Brush in hand, yet again. And of course, I'm using my silver black velvet. This is a number eight. I have a number eight, a number six, and my three quarter oval wash. Let's paint this out. Um, Tara's probably watching this and like just getting a kick out of it because she's like, yep, mm hmm, uh huh, been there. <laughs> exactly what's going on. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, here we go. We are ready. Give me the timer again. And let's do it. I'm already, I'm already like, you've taken too long. Now my brain's gone. You took too long. Oh, I And did we? Well, I'm just going to let it run backwards down the board. These sides do look like I like their color. But without putting any more paint on it. Just gonna let that kind of move down toward to what was already there to try to get that rain, the look of the rain. And of course, I must have dropped water in this spot here without knowing and picked it here, touched it with the, I don't know. 
but we'll just have to see how that dries and see what we think. I still think the best one was number two, even though it's a little messed up. <sighs> we'll let this dry. I'm going to come back. We'll look at them. We'll see how they finished, how they dried, and decide which one is um, the one we like best. Number one, two, four, three. The only thing that I am going to do is just kind of bring this back together where I touched it. So other than that, yeah, I, I put a bloom in here and I don't know that that can be fixed, but it can be fixed. But would that be cheating? I don't know. Just kind of not adding paint, blending it around. See if maybe we can fix it. So when it dries, it doesn't look a little wretched. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's going to end up staying. There's going to be a spot there. I'd have to put more pigment into it. And, um, I don't know. I guess it is what it is. I know that's it's, it's cheating. I come back. I touched it up after the five minutes. I mean, I'm not, I haven't changed it per se. I'm justifying. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to kind of let it do its thing. I still think that probably the second one is the best one, but I'm going to dry. We'll come back and you can let me know what you think. We'll be back in just a second. Okay. So now let's just see. Can I actually do a landscape in five minutes? So I'm thinking just some um, new like gradient um, hills. Maybe they're a little foggy. I'm gonna bring in some of those similar elements, but we'll try to simplify it a bit and see. Can it happen? All right. Have an idea. So going with that, and I'm going to take just a little piece. I have a little piece of tissue here because I'm going to get that wrapped up because I'm going to use it to kind of give me some little clout. And I'm going to want to do this quickly. Timer is ready. This is just about this one. Five minutes. Can we do it? We are about to find out. Actually, you know what? I think let's just give us the best chance. I have something in mind. I'm going to put a couple little lines down on my page just as a guide. Let me do that first and then we'll jump into it. One moment. I will, I will pause to do that, but it'll be a second for you. Okay. So I have a quick sketch in there just put some little guides for where i want some mountains to be and we are ready to go so five minutes are on the clock i have colors mixed up all right and i'll be starting with my sky working my way down let's begin <laughs> already feeling like, oh, you're spending too much time on the sky. Move on, move on. Right, moving right. came much closer, much closer. 
um probably spend too much time through here but i love how when you do it that way like this will automatically create the trees for you because as i was adding pigment in and adding pigment to my wash and putting that down through here because this kind of just makes it look like the clouds are pulling down through over these mountains whereas in here by adding more pigment that pigment wants to travel up into that wet area and it definitely you know gives you the look that there's trees there and then coming in with this stand of trees and you see even here that look what's happening all on its own that green pushing into that black i mean it looks like i have trees forming on their own now um and the granulation that i'm getting by putting in the mars black in that and then coming back with that wash now if i would have been just a little faster boom boom, boom i would have had that last wash over and it kind of would have done that but this is almost making it look like I have these trees kind of closer that don't have those leaves on. I'm really kind of liking this. So we were maybe a couple seconds beyond our five minute mark, but um, I'm going to let this dry and I will show you. I'm just going to let it keep doing its thing because I mean, this like this tree is growing the way that this is kind of branching out and spreading. I'm finding that really interesting. Just gonna let it do its thing now and we'll see what we get and so i'll let you be the judge do we pull off five minute watercolor landscape i think so i mean you know there's some there's some little couple seconds between clicking that button and actually starting and then in that last little whoosh over the top um if i would have left it alone it probably would have mingled and done its own thing i probably didn't even need to come back over like that probably would have blended through on its own but what do you guys think um let me let this dry and i will come back do some closing thoughts and stay tuned because i'm about to pass this challenge along and let's see where it's gonna go while it'll be a few moments for me it'll only be seconds for you and i will be back with you in just a moment. Ooh, okay. So that, that was a lot. And that was not what I was expecting at all. Um, at first I thought, yeah, I'll be able to do this. Sure, I'll be able to do this. No problem, I can, I can do this. I can do this, this will, this will be good. And um, <clears throat> then came attempt number one. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I am not going to be able to do this. <sighs> yeah, the little bit of self-doubt started creeping in. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe you just picked an overzealous uh, reference photo. Should I have even picked a reference photo? I don't know. Because I saw when Tara did hers, and if you haven't seen that video, I definitely am going to link that in the description below because, you know, this all started because of her. And actually, a huge shout out to um, Emma Jane Lefebvre, who, if anybody watches her channel, um, she does some amazing work with florals. And <clears throat> if you are interested in watercolor and florals, she's definitely somebody to check out her channel so if you haven't seen her before i'm gonna link hers in the description below because this started with her um and tara was inspired to do the challenge and then of course passed it to me so yeah i watched both tara and emma's videos and i know tara used a dryer and emma felt mm, we could probably pause it for the dry time and not count that right which that's fine for both of them and i was like oh but i can do it without the dryer or pausing surely <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that happened with this <laughs> and as you see well i do think though that this could be an abstract watercolor landscape painting on its own merit like it it could be does it matter that it took five minutes to do this? 
No, that could be an abstract, more, you know, more abstract like landscape painting in watercolor. Yes, that's, that's my personal opinion. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> this of course was not the reference photo that I was trying to show you and no, I don't have it. I was wondering if I had, had it on where I could just pop it up to show you the actual reference photo. I don't on this screen, but regardless, that was five minutes, but I wanted my reference photo. So I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do it again. Cause I saw that Tara took more than one attempt um, to see if she could do it. And Emma did two different. So I kind of combined both of what they both experienced. And of course, this was my second attempt. And in doing that second attempt, this, what happened was I knew I had to get this laid down and then come back and hit this at the end because then my time might be running out, but you know, I would be done painting but I could still kind of manipulate the water maybe in the dry time. I was looking for ways that I could kind of get around. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be honest. Ways that like, I'm not technically painting, but I'm, I'm helping it dry in a direction that I want, if you would. So, um, is it cheating? I don't know. Is that my Kobayashi Maru? Do are you guys like Star Trek fans? Do you get that reference? Um, if there's any Kirk fans out there, just drop me a comment and let me know. <laughs> Anyhow, the second I hit this one here and it was darker than I wanted, it was like panic stations. Oh no, I, how do I fix that? I'm gonna run out of time. I can't get this done in time. If I take time for that, I should have just left it alone. Like the whole point is put it down. You have five minutes, do what you can. And what do you get? And appreciate it for what it is. And, and it's definitely was absolutely a learning experience. Um, so I thought, you know what? If I got, I was there, I was right there, I did it, and, and it wasn't quite the way that I wanted it to be, I can do it again, right? I can duplicate this. And then came this guy. And no, I have this like floating landmass out here that I'm like, is this like in the middle of, is this a river? Like this doesn't even look like the same scene to me. This looks like hills and different areas. And this looks like maybe this is just land in the middle of this river or something here on the bank we're on the bank. I, I, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. Did I accomplish the look of rain? Because that's what I felt like in my reference photo. It just looked like it was raining. And let me, let me see if I can, I think if I go to a different screen, I know I had the reference photo because I wanted to show that to you. So let's jump back. So here we have all three of these and Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. So there was the reference photo. That was what I was actually working from. That's what I wanted it to look like. You see how it just looks like the rain starting to fall down on this land. And I had already made a conscious decision that I was going to take out the, um, that is not what I was looking to do. Not at all. There we go. So I had already had that mindset. I was going to take out the tree that's furthest to the right and not worry about that, but have that one distant tree that should have been, that should have been painted when I did this, this purple part. It should have been in that purple. It should have happened right here in that part. Why I was thinking, oh, it has, I paint it here. Again, five minutes, put that timer on and see what happens. Um, so I was like, you know, I could, I could do that differently. And then when I did, and I was coming through doing this one and I saw the time I was losing time and I was like, you know what, we might just have to omit that. And then I dropped the water on here and it, you make one mistake, like one thing that deviates from that course of uh, the plan that you had for yourself during that painting. And it's just like, all bets are off. Um, good luck trying to get there. So as you can see, for these, it was painting one, 
painting two, and then of course that was painting number three. I think number two came out the closest to the reference photo, and I would love to do this one again with time. No, no restriction. Even it, well, even if I said I'm going to paint it faster, um, but longer than five minutes and see what I could do with this because I really love this painting. And, and what I liked about this was it definitely forced me to think about how do I, <clears throat> how do I convey <clears throat> the rain and watercolor and what can I do to get that paint to flow in such a way that it's going to look like that. And you know, it's slightly darker here than I wanted maybe on the edges, but all in all, like this part, I think I kind of started to get that look of the clouds. Yeah. My, my tones are a little different, but I was choosing to use the Daniel Smith inspiration set because I haven't used that much and I wanted to have a chance to do that. So I did it in colors that I could create from that set which I'm very happy with. So which one do you like the best? I absolutely do not like number three. That's just my preference. I don't like number three. You might, and that's fine. I don't care for it. I do love the abstract um, look to number one. It's completely different. Um, I didn't have time to get the tree in there. Everything just went awry. Um, stuff started growing out of here and I was like, oh, well, okay, this is just going to be a practice. But then when number two came along, I was so disappointed that I made this mistake and that just sent me kind of reeling. And, um, but I am most happy with the way the number two came out. So number two is my personal favorite. But then I was like, you know what, let's take the reference photo and the whole conundrum of what order things had to be in and, and when I was going to do it. And could I do this if I just thought of a landscape and painted it quickly? Like just say real quick, oh, I'd like to do something like this. And let's just take five minutes and kind of throw that on paper and see what that might look like. And then perhaps I'll want to go back and paint it in a longer format. So this would be something like, oh, we could just do in our sketchbooks, right? There's some real quick five minute boom. And it's an idea, conveying an idea. And I think that is really the benefit that I got from this whole experience. So let me just bring you back over to here and let's look at this was the one that I did. No reference. Let's just put this down, thinking about how I could do a landscape that I could do or I thought I could do in just five minutes. And again, I had a mindset. Now, as I started this, I paused. As soon as I started, I was like, I'm just going to go into it. And then I was like, well, no, maybe I should give myself some guidelines. So I stopped and added some guidelines. Now, once I had those guidelines in, now I had a mindset of what this should look like. And because I had a mindset of what it should look like, then as it wasn't coming together exactly the way that I was envisioning, it stopped me and it slowed me down. And I started thinking about it more instead of just putting down the paint and reacting and, and working off of what the watercolor was telling me. I can just say that I loved the way some of the effects that I got with these clouds. And this is where this was a huge benefit because as I looked at these clouds, oh, I will try some fun, just wet and wet. I've always spent so much time thinking about them where I was just like, nope, I need to have some of these areas white, dab that out with a tissue and then went, okay, now underneath, I'm going to want there to be like shadow. So I just dropped it in and then whatever happened, happened. I didn't think about it. I just moved on and I got some effects that I really like. So I know that I will definitely, <clears throat> definitely try that <clears throat> again. Um, I also like, I wanted this to look like trees and I knew if I pulled this water down, that these trees were going to kind of paint themselves because 
I came in down lower, but the paint, because I had more pigment, I knew was going to travel towards the other area. I was hoping because that's delicate balance of water and that's being able to control your water, how much it will move like that. And I was hoping I would just get these fringed up trees in the distance, which I think I accomplished. And then these kind of silhouette of trees in the foreground, I went in with much, uh, much thicker pigment to water ratio because I wanted to put them there and I wanted it to kind of stay right there. And so this was very thick. And of course I laid the line in here first because I wanted this bottom to already start to be drying because I only had, you know, I only had moments at this time. I'm, I'm running out of time. And then I'd paint the tops of the trees and then come back with the green wash. And then look what happened though. That, it just grew right up out of the ground, just like a tree would. And to me, it just looks like trees in shrubbery that's growing up out of the ground. And look at the granulation because I chose... I had the um, <clears throat> Mars Black and Moons, yeah, Mars Black and all of a sudden uh, my mind's like, I don't even know what to tell you it was. Um, Moon Glow, see, I, just as I go to get my paper, Moon Glow, which is one of my favorite Daniel Smith colors. I love Moon Glow. This was moon glow. The mountains were moon glow. The shadows in the clouds, that was moon glow. This was lunar black. But look, when I blended the lunar black and the moon glow and dropped that into the green that I was using, again, that was the green from the inspiration set. Look at the granulation I got. Like the ground painted itself. All of the grasses and such that like it just painted itself as it settled. I probably did not even need to wipe my brush back across it because I was like, oh no, the, the timer went and I had just, you know, I had lines um, and made the decision to just go ahead and pull the brush back over it even though time had expired and, <coughs> excuse me. But look, I, I will absolutely use this combination again now, like knowing it just paint. I just painted it up. Then it was just sit back and watch and watch it kind of start to come to life. And yeah, I lost some in this here, but did I? Or does it look like the clouds are just starting to lose their water now, and maybe it's getting ready to rain back there? You know, I don't know. I guess that's all in how other people might see it. Um, I liked the way it came out. So all in all, this was a fantastic experience. Uh, Thank you to both Emma and Tara for sharing this because you certainly, you both inspired me to try something that I, there's no way I would have said, ooh, let me just, let me see if I can back that out. Let, let me, let me take on some crazy challenge and come at a painting in five minutes. Like, no, I would not. That that would not have been on my list of fun things to do. <laughs> but I'm so glad that I did. I learned so much. And I think that you could learn a lot too. Be prepared. Take a sheet of paper, cut it into four. This was the B watercolor paper. So I was using the 90 pound, 100% uh, cotton B watercolor paper. I took that paper, I cut it in half. And because I knew I wanted to work small for this. So I cut it in half. <clears throat> and that's two sheets of paper to go through this process. Take a sheet, nine by 12, cut it into quarters. Give this a try. Try it a few times. See what you think. And if you do try it, drop me a comment and let me know what was your experience. And once that timer started going, was, were you like me? Like, I was like, oh, I can do that in five minutes. Surely I can do that. Because I did not have an expectation that this was going to be a perfect painting. So I already took that precious, um, you know, out of the equation. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be what it is. Then, of course, I added in the thought of this reference photo that I wanted to get. So then my brain was going, but you have to paint it like the reference photo. You don't, folks. You don't. Just have fun with it. And 
then when it came down to this one, like I was so much more, I don't want to say relaxed because that was not relaxing. <laughs> there was nothing relaxing about that. But I definitely was able to come at this um, with a different approach uh, when I did this one. So I encourage you, give this a try. Let me know in the comments, do you think that you're going, do you think you will be able to do it? So if you're considering doing this, drop me a comment that says, you're gonna give it a try and you think you can do it or you don't think you can do it. <clears throat> then I want you to come back after you've completed this little challenge. And again, cut four. Say, I'm gonna give myself at least four tries. That takes even more pressure off, right? I've got four attempts at this to just try to get what I'm, you know, what I'm thinking, what you're conceiving, or just throw it random and see what happens. But a watercolor landscape painting, five minutes, and then come back and let me know. What did you think? What happened? Are you glad you did it? And what did you learn? Um, and I can't wait to chat with you all in, in the comments below and see what happened because I'm really looking forward to finding out. So now let's talk about passing it on. Emma encouraged other people to try it as I'm encouraging you to give this a try. And Tara did try it and then she wanted to throw the challenge out. The gauntlet had been tossed and I accepted. Now, I mentioned somebody that I think would be perfect for this challenge. And this person is someone who I've seen do lots with watercolor. And she just amazes me with some of the things that I see her do. And I definitely think that she could tackle this challenge um, with the utmost success in five minutes five whole minutes and I just you know I just picture her being like all right well that's done oh we still have time oh what else do we want to add here yeah like that that's how I picture now no extra pressure no extra pressure on this person <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> I just think she'd be wonderful and <clears throat> I know that right now things are crazy for her. So I don't suspect that this is going to be something she can do right away, um, which is why I'm not throwing the challenge per se to her, but I would love to see it if she would take it on. Um, I know she's trying to get her twins settled in dorms and her son moved into his new place. And But Lindsay, when things settle down and the quiet of the house is something you want to escape, why not take on a five minute watercolor challenge and join the rest of us crazy folks <laughs> who have experienced this. So yes, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, um, I think you would be wonderful at this challenge. I think this is something that would be right up your alley and that you could certainly achieve. Uh, who would I like to see take on this challenge? Um, I sent some watercolors to another artist here on YouTube because I wanted to share them. She did not have any of the Daniel Smith colors, which are, of course, are my favorites. Um, and so I sent Lisa over at Lockery Fine Art some Daniel Smith watercolors. And I've only seen her do watercolor a few times but I would love to see her use those Daniel Smith colors, give this a try and let us know, one, what does she think of this crazy challenge? And two, what does she think of those paints? So there's the, who would I like to see do the challenge? But let's talk about who I'm throwing this challenge to. The gauntlet is, being, is about ready to be tossed down. And this is someone who already supports my channel um, as I support his, and yes, the art of Joseph Fincham, he actually shared this little comment. So I think he suspects it's him. 
if you were with his in his last stream, you know that he was just practicing in anticipation <laughs> that this could be coming. So yes, in fact, good sir, the gauntlet has been tossed and I challenge you to do this five minute watercolor landscape challenge. And I cannot wait to see what you do with it. And um, I hope you have as much fun as I did. So there you have it. Let me know what, what was your favorite. And I hope that you guys will try it too, because it, it was a lot of fun. I learned so much. Even things that I thought I already knew about the watercolor and how it was going to work and react. It still surprised me in some ways. And so this was so beneficial and working wet and wet and which I, I love already, but wet and wet, not being able to have enough time to like dry something and then have to go on to something else. And how's that going to move and having to plan how you kind of work around that. This was a great experience. In fact, I think I will be doing more quick watercolor study. I'll call it a study, right? Because it's small and oh, I would absolutely do something like this here on a larger scale, but then go, oh, how do I duplicate this? Because I loved that effect. And that was just watercolor being watercolor and doing its thing. And why did that green travel up and fracture the way it did? It's just the way those two pigments interacted. And it started a little bit here, but not as much, not like this. And I suspect there was probably more water in that area. And of course, that kind of led it to do its its thing, whatever. But what a great experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Um, you know, you're going to give this a go. I hope you give this a go. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we do crazy stuff like this and um, experiment with new supplies and push their limits and test things all the time. That's what you can expect here on the channel and I hope you will subscribe and stick around. Okay, until next time, keep creating quickly. I want to hear about it in the comments below when you do and I will pop up another video. It's right there. Yeah, right here and that you might like to watch. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.